Hello everyone. The commands for Linux boot modules and files vary depending on the distro you are using. Today we'll learn the required modules and commands that can be found on most of the distros of Linux out there that you will be working with as a system administrator and what is required for the Linux Plus CompTIA exam. If you install new hardware that is required to be visible at boot, you must modify the INITRD file. This file defines the initial RAM disk file, which contains drivers necessary for the kernel to interact with the system hardware. Think of it as Windows version of Device Manager. In Red Hat versions of Linux, you will use the mkinitrd command to create a new initrd RAM disk image to contain the modules for the new hardware you are installing. In DBAN type systems, this file is called the INITRAMFS, and you create it using the MKINITRAMFS command. You can also use the DRACUT utility, which creates the INITRAMFS image from a framework and copies the files from the installed modules for the devices that you are adding to your machine. Not all kernels support EFI or UEFI boot options, so be sure to check with your distribution to make sure. The ESP or EFI system partition utility utilizes the Microsoft FAT system, FAT file system to store the bootloader programs. Typically this is mounted in the slash boot slash elfie folder and the bootloader files are usually stored using the .efi extension, for example, the linux.efi file found at slash boot slash efi location in Linux, in Kali Linux for this example that's on the screen. What we have here is a sample of a Grub legacy configuration file. And if you'll notice from the example, the kernel file name was called bmlinuz. The Z at the end of the file name indicates the kernel is compressed using the BZLMAGE compression method. This is a common method used by most Linux distributions. Kernel files that aren't compressed are usually called VMLINUX. In most distros, you won't have to install GRUB2. You'll simply rebuild the main installation file from GRUB legacy by running the grub-makeconfig program. This will read the config file stored in the slash etc slash grub.d folder and assembles the commands into the single grub.cfg config file. You can update the configuration file manually by running the grub-mkconfig command, redirecting the output to the slash boot slash grub slash grub dot cfg config file. Note that you must redirect the output of the grub make config program to the grub dot cfg config. In the unlikely event that you don't have grub installed, you can install it with the default settings by running grub2 dash install slash space slash dev slash sda. So you're basically telling grub2 to install and you want it to mount at the sda file location. Then you'll update the config files by running grub2-makeconfig. Be sure to join me next time. We are going to learn what to do if something goes wrong during the boot startup process.